Tonight on Five Rounds, it was a shocking night in and out of the octagon as Michael Bisping on two weeks' notice defeats Luke Rockhold with a first-round knockout to become the new middleweight champion of the world. Dominic Cruz took the trilogy belt with longtime rival Uriah Faber in a one-sided unanimous decision, and Dan Henderson survived an early onslaught to knock out Hector Lombard cold. Robin Black and I discussed some of the fallout from one of the year's best cards to date. Plus, it's the return of Brock Lesnar. The former UFC heavyweight champion will compete at UFC 200, sending shockwaves through the wrestling and mixed martial arts world. There's plenty to discuss in this loaded edition of Five Rounds, and it starts right now. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to our downtown studios. L.A. played host to UFC 199 over the weekend, and it is one of the reasons why we love the sport of mixed martial arts. Luke Rockhold was supposed to win this fight. Michael Bisping shows us what he is truly made of as he lands a left hand that sends the, sent the middleweight champion reeling to the ground. And in the end, Michael Bisping becomes the new UFC middleweight champion of the world. A win over Anderson Silva, one of the greatest of all time, and this specimen, Luke Rockhold, simply amazing. Amazing, absolutely incredible, and uh, it was beautiful the way he did it, too. Yes, what finished him off was a right hand to the sternum and a left hook. He got outside of Luke's right hook, got outside, stepped around it, went sternum over the top. But he had been measuring that out in the first few minutes through the sternum punch with a leg kick, just kind of mixed it up a little bit. Weirdly, Luke Rockhold looked like he was going to a picnic or something. He didn't show up mentally ready to fight. That can be a credit to the games that Bisping played. That can be a credit to the confidence Bisping walked in here with. Right there, you see it. Going right hand and left over top. Luke's right hand is a big weapon. So Mike wanted to go in with the straight right and come with the left hook over that weapon. Beautiful stuff. When you look at Luke's performance, it's not as if it was a bad performance. He did look good, he looked smooth, he looked quick. Unfortunately for Luke Rockhold, there wasn't that sense of urgency. There wasn't that confidence that we've seen from Luke Rockhold in the past. It's almost like he allowed Michael Bisping to take control of the, the mental element of the game. I agree. And uh, when he fought against Weidman, he was so mentally strong. He was so confident. He had built up those aspects, whether it be by studying some of the other fighters that were being successful with the right mental strength or what it was. But Luke Rockhold's confidence sort of got away from him. You know what I mean? It just kind of got out of control. You build it up, you build up your own self-confidence, your belief, your understanding that belief in your skills is a big part of expressing them properly. And then he just lost control. He was in there thinking he didn't even have to show up. He could just, you know, walk forward. At some point he knew Michael Bisping would be on the ground unconscious. That's not how confidence works. Confidence is a byproduct of an incredible hard work and focus. And in Luke Rockhold's case, it was overconfidence. But didn't he do that? Wasn't he preparing for an even better Chris Weidman working with good training partners. Well, I know a lot of fighters, you know, they, they focus on strategy. Okay, we have a specific strategy for this type of fighter. However, we're gonna play our own game. You know, a lot of people are talking about how Michael Bisping took this fight on short notice, two weeks. Luke Rockhold and his team own, and of, of course they were preparing for Michael Bisping in the past, but as you've talked about and they were talking about, each fight is a different animal. Yes, it is. And uh, you know, every time you see these fighters that are a little different, you gain knowledge, you know? Leona Machida was unbeatable, but every time he fought a few more rounds, people got some, some footage to assess. They got some data to gather and study. And it's the same thing with Rockhold. I did a breakdown going in with Dan Hardy, who said, in his opinion, that Rockhold would win, uh, Bisping would win two out of 10 times. So I guess this was yeah. one of those. But this Bisping, on this night, the way he was performing against this Rockhold on this night, I think it would have been eight out of 10 times. It is who you are in the moment. But it's Rockhold who you study, and it's Rockhold who you game plan for. We described his style as simplexic, a cut, the relationship between the simplicity of just a couple weapons and the complexity of the individual weapons. And that right hand, the more you study it, the more you understand it. And Bisping came in there with a great plan of moving in on a different angle to make that punch miss and come over top of it. It really was beautiful. We've heard coaches uh, and fighters in the past say sometimes you just can't overthink things, that once you get in there, the reality is 
it's just a fight. And it really felt that Michael Bisping embraced that theory. Yeah, he did. And, and it was something he talked about going into it. He said he wanted to fight a little more primally. He had learned how to fight. He had studied yeah. fighting. He had programmed his body. He has trained as a, as a combat sportsman and a martial artist and just a fighter his whole life. So just go in there and fight a fight against a man. It wasn't go in there and, oh, my God, it's my only title shot I'll ever get against a guy who already beat me. None of that matters. Go in, fight the man. That's what he did. He had a brilliant performance, and you cannot take anything away from him. But Rockhold also had a flat performance, an overconfident performance, and a performance where he didn't go after it. And yes, he's a slow starter, but you could see it in the way that he was casually, yeah. you know, he just thought it was a foregone conclusion. And if you think a fore uh, fight is a foregone conclusion, it probably is, but not the way you think. Yeah, that's very, very strange that he would have that approach considering you know, if that sparring session was what Michael Bisping said it was, why would you not take this fight very, very seriously? And I just think for Michael Bisping, it's just clearly it is the, the cherry on top of an amazing career, one of the most respected fighters out there. And remember, it wasn't all that long ago that he was the bad guy. People yeah. were booing this guy, and there was such an ovation, even at the pre-fight press conference. And then after Bisping wins this title, what is the evolution of a fighter that has gone through the grind? That really, he earned his title shot. We've seen fighters in the past because of one reason or another, they get a fight, they get a call on short notice, somebody gets hurt, they have a certain look about them, they get the title fight. Michael Bisping certainly earned his championship fight. He made the most of it, as I pointed out, getting that win over Anderson Silva and now this specimen, Luke Rockhold. How do you evolve as a fighter? As you're telling that story and recapping that stuff, I just can't help but have a big yeah. smile on my face, you know? This is what the martial arts are supposed to be. A guy, a driven, obsessive combat sportsman, a guy who's born a fighter, goes through it, gets better and better, never really gets his chance, but never really complains. He, he's talked about whoever they they put in front of him yeah. is the guy he'll fight says no to no one says yes to everything and he's a guy who got better and better and better and his turning point is fascinating when we start zeroing in on this Weidman was the mentally strongest guy we'd ever seen at 185 pounds you could feel it you did the interview with him uh, two months out from the first Anderson Silva fight he was gonna beat yeah. Anderson then people would think it was weird and then he's gonna have to do it again he laid all that out and it all came true Rockhold came along studied the mentality what it is to be at your best in the moment. And that's how he beat Weidman. And then Mike Bisping, through a, a career and a lifetime of, uh, of figuring out who he is authentically as a fighter, grows and evolves until the time finally comes and he can get it done. Luke Rockhold, he understood uh, the options were Jacare and Michael Bisping. Rockhold uh, was very vocal about the fact that he wanted to get paid. Jacare is not going to vocally sell this fight. <laughs> this is the guy. Michael Bisping is going to talk this fight up and get more eyeballs. A lot of more people buying the, the pay-per-view. This is a good thing for the UFC, one of the most vocal fighters ever in UFC history. When you look at the fighters in the top five right now, who are the best matchups for Michael Bisping? If you're trying to sell big fights and you want to have exciting fights, and I know Michael Bisping's always involved in yeah. exciting fights. Okay, so from my perspective, I would love to see him fight Chris Weidman, yeah. who I truly believe is the best fighter at 185 pounds. I still believe that. I'd love to see that fight. You know what you have with Michael Bisping is you have no shortage. Yeah. Hey, man, I hate that juiced-up Vitor who wrecked my <laughs> eye. Hey, man, that Chris Weidman, I don't like him. Hey, Luke Rockhold, he swore at him. Create a little controversy, yeah. too. Controversy is not always a bad thing. Hey, Jacare, you're the best guy in the world. You think Jacare might not be an entertaining guy in, from the fight-selling standpoint? Yeah. Bisping makes anybody work like yeah, that. It, so if you told me six months ago that on this night, Michael Bisping would be the champion and this other thing, I don't know which one I would have <laughs> Again, super UFC 199. Of course, Bisping wins the title, but some people, maybe the biggest news, the announcement that at UFC 200, we would see the return of Brock Lesnar, one of the biggest superstars in sports entertainment, whether it's professional wrestling or mixed martial arts. And now Brock Lesnar has an opponent. It looks like it will be Mark Hunt, a very exciting matchup. However, the question that the martial artists will be asking, the real fighters, is has Brock Lesnar evolved as a mixed martial artist? Has he been training? Because we know that Mark Hunt certainly has been. We've seen his evolution. Well, we do not have answers for that because this man lives in the bush in Minnesota <laughs> somewhere. And we don't know what he's been doing. You presume since, I mean, why would he do this now? 
I, I would have never believed that he was going to be here at UFC 200. Why would he do this now? It's because it means something to him. He doesn't need the money. He can make money, you know, uh, doing uh, scripted fighting. Yeah. He doesn't need the money. He's doing it to prove something. If you're doing something to prove something, you're pretty motivated. If you're pretty motivated and you always have to be working out, you're probably training fighting. It's going to be an interesting one. I can't believe it's Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt has the ability to shut off any giant. And he moves his hips very, very well these days. He's able to, uh, when he defends takedowns, it's about putting his hands straight arming and moving his feet. Oh, and don't forget about that. <laughs> and don't forget about this. I mean, this is gonna be insane. Brock clearly needs to, to put this man on his back. This is an incredibly evolved fighter. We saw that against, Mark, uh, against Frank Mir, who in, in his own right, right there, in his own right has developed into a much higher level striker than Lesnar ever could even with the time he's had. It, it requires a certain amount of time, dedication, and training to reach the level that Frank Mira reached on the feet. Boom, uh, shot Frank Mira off. So Lesnar, you know, the elite wrestler, the monster, has to and wants to and will look to put it on the ground. That's not easy, man. Mark Hunt has evolved with that footwork to kind of play Matador. Very true, but again, if you go back and look at uh, Brock Lesnar's fight with Cain Velasquez, Lesnar, because of his size and his power and his wrestling background, was able to barrel Cain Velasquez over. However, Cain Velasquez quickly got back to his feet. The unfortunate thing about this is I think we are looking at truly uh, a guy that could have done really great things in the sport of mixed martial arts. If instead, I know MMA wasn't around during those days, but if he dedicated the amount of time that he did to professional wrestling, or to, to mixed martial arts, that he did to professional wrestling, I think we would have one of the most dominant champions ever. This was the heavyweight yeah. champion yeah. of the world, right here. This guy became the heavyweight champion of the world. And when he took out Randy Couture, Randy said his wrestling impressed him, although Randy was able to get up to his feet from under him, which in and of itself is a, an amazing accomplishment. But he said it was the deceptive nature of his hands. That when you look at a giant sign on Las Vegas Boulevard, because the depth and the size and the sort of perspective is so weird, you look and you go, oh, that thing's really close. Meanwhile, it can be 100 blocks yeah. away. It's just so your vision and the way you look at the perspective changes. Lesnar's giant body like that was like that for Randy. He couldn't read the distance and the size. When hands are that big, you think they're closer or further away. The thickness, the size, very deceptive. Whoever is going to be, uh, whoever, Mark Hunt, as of today, is going to be fighting him. That's something Mark Hunt needs to prepare for. What do you expect uh, to see? Do you expect to see anything different from Brock Lesnar? Do you think this is a guy that has been training in secret? That once he started down this mixed martial arts path, you start falling in love with things. It's like, okay, I really enjoy this training. You know, even though I'm not competing in mixed martial arts right now, I'm going to do this because I really do. I mean, he is a competitor. Mm -hmm. This guy is a martial arts champion. Yeah. Wrestling is clearly a, a martial art that was developed back in the day in Europe. And then, of course, it became huge in North America. Brock Lesnar has that background. So you would expect as soon as he started learning jujitsu or Thai boxing, he would fall in love with it. There's a certain amount of guessing that we have to do, but you can improve the likelihood of your guess by gathering more information, inferring things we've learned about other people. and. Uh, my guess is, yeah, this guy probably has been training like crazy. He wouldn't just suddenly announce this when he doesn't need it if he wasn't ready. I, this guy can do backflips. I expect some pretty crazy things out of Brock Lesnar. Coming up, Dominic Cruz turns in another spectacular decision against Uriah Faber as the Bantamweight champion continues his dominance over Team Alpha Male. We'll discuss this fight, plus what's next for both Cruz and Faber when five rounds on FNQ.